Yay Networks. Hi there, I'm Mia Sanchez, and you may recognize me as Miss USA and first runner-up at Miss Universe. Well, there is so much more to me than the sash, the crown, the dresses, the chicken cutlets, and the butt glue. Yep, that's a real thing, and we'll get into that later. I am a fourth degree black belt, a women's self-defense instructor, a mother, and a wife to my amazing co-host, Daniel Bucco. We are keeping it real as we dig into relationships, parenting, confidence, self-defense, travel, all the joys and struggles that come with living this beautiful thing we call life. So pull up a chair and throw your hair in a messy bun as we chat with all types of life experts. So make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and look out for Hold My Crown wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Hello and happy Valentine's Day. When you are listening to this, it's going to be Valentine's Day. My birthday is manana. The Yay. day after Valentine's yes, exactly, Day. Yes, exactly. The 15th. So exciting. Which I completely got screwed over on because now I have to do Valentine's Day and a birthday right after. Yes. I cannot combine. I am very clear that will, it's two separate days. It will be off with my head. <laughs> Anywho, today is all about love. I'm excited about this episode. We have questions from all of you that we will be answering. And I feel like at this point, we're pretty qualified to talk, especially about dating, engagement, even marriage, even kids with young, like we're we're Off qualified. A show. We've been together for ten years. Off a show, going on eleven, yes. craziness, and we've been married for eight years. So we yes. are ready, but we both had very different origin stories when it comes to love and relationships. So I want to do a quick, like sixty second summary of kind of our backgrounds when it comes to relationships and love and like our family and then we'll get right on into all those questions wow go daniel so when you say 60 (laughs) seconds you mean like seven minutes or is that come on keep it concise you can do it all right uh my upbringing uh very rare my parents are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary this year their parents that's crazy celebrated 68 years married before my grandma passed wow so uh that is kind of the the line that i i have have come from um my parents were great i never really saw them fight they were always uh uh very communicative (laughs) communicative that sounds good we'll take it maybe yeah um very loving very intentional um loved us dearly you know unconditionally everything was said you know there's i love you know my my dad always said there's nothing that you you can do in your life that will ever make me love you less so any mistakes that you love that make that's nugget number one to take away from the episode like so good nothing will ever make me love you less yes that's that's true unconditional love so i saw that that's how he had treated my mom um and his children and something that i tried to bring in um, to my relationships growing up and especially with you. I'm trying. Good job. (laughs) That was a good intro. So Daniel comes from perfection, pretty much, (laughs) when it comes to love. Can I say something real quick? Sure, real quick. Because there's generational patterns that Mm -hmm. also happen. And that's why, like, you know, there's, you know, over 50% and in the divorce, you look at the patterns of the generations before, 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 Mm -hmm. and you can see divorce, 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 not Mm -hmm. always, but everybody has the opportunity to break that generational pattern. Mm -hmm. If they're intentional about it, if they do the work, if they, you know, go into something saying, this is not going to be it for me. It stops with me. It may have Mm -hmm. happened for the past four generations before me. But I have the power to stop at the best to my ability. I feel like this is just going to be a Daniel sermon. Let me drop sermon. this mic right quick. <laughs> Let me drop this mic right quick. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have lots of good nuggets today because we love love and we've been through lots and I'm, you know, excited to just share yeah. the wisdom and the wisdom that I, I've learned so much from Daniel and from his family. Um, but I ain't perfect. That's for dang show. No. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Pretty close. Well, pretty well, close. Well, all right. So I get my sixty-second spiel of my family origin Go. and I'm love done. and all of that, and it's just so different than Daniel's, which is fine because we do balance each other really well. But 
I grew up in a family where there was a lot of fighting, um, you know, just yelling back and forth about whatever, including like the temperature in the house. I remember there was one all night long fight where like my mom would turn up the temperature, my dad would turn it down and it was, went on for hours. Like they just, just always fighting. Um, cut to my parents got divorced and then my mom was with someone for 10 years and that relationship ended and my dad was married again and that relationship ended. So I've just seen divorce. My grandparents were divorced. Um, that's kind of my background when it comes to like what I've seen as examples. So when I started dating, I was hopeful, but I really had that question of like, is there a really healthy, happy, long-term, can it, can even a long-term relationship be happy? Cause my, you know, my Oma, my Opa, they I'm sure had so many happy years, but they were like, you know, really good roommates at times. It's from my perspective as a kid. So I just saw like, yeah, you can stay together, but are you in love way long, long, long time? And then I met Daniel and his family. I'm like, his mom and dad are flirting and you know, it's just (laughs) so cute. But cut to like our relationship and dating. I still, I had done so much work to be really healthy, like emotionally and relationally. And I still had more learning to do, but I luckily found someone who I was already, I did the work. I was prepared to be like dating to get married, but also he had like grace and patience in the beginning of our relationship. Yeah. Although I, we have probably have so many stories. We really need to get into your questions. But like, I do remember when we were first dating and I was telling you something, I think I was telling you like, oh, oh, speaking of Valentine's Day, I, okay, this is it. I was like, oh yeah, I've never really been single for Valentine's Day, just like this last year. And you were like, well, that's a red flag. Like you said that to my <laughs> face. <laughs> and I was like, well, I mean, I'm, well, I'm only 23, like, I think I was 23 when we met. Uh-huh. And so I was like, I was in a long-term relationship and then I was dating someone else like the other two years and my last one I was single, like, but I'm young. Like you were almost 30 when we met, you had more right. Valentine's to be single. I was in a long, you know, but he I, literally I was like, that's a red flag. <laughs> well, because I was, you know, thinking that, you know, cause some people feel like, I have to be in a relationship or I have to have someone during this, you know, time that is about love Mm -hmm. and, you know, whatever. So I need, I need, I need, you know, a man during this time. Right. Um, Besides being (laughs) comfortable in your own skin and knowing that, you know. Yeah. But again, to retract, you are the example of someone who came from a divorced family Mm -hmm. and chose to do the work. Yeah. And said, this is not, I'm going to take what I've learned from this. Yeah. And do the opposite in, mm. in certain areas and take the good nuggets that obviously, obviously came right. from, you know, parts of your parents as well. Um, but you're the, you're the, you're the example. Thank so. you. It is possible, Thank guys. You. Thank you. And this won't be all like rainbows and sunshines, all your, uh, all your questions and, and our answers. We're going to keep it real, give you like the real advice that you might not even want to hear, but it's the good stuff and it will help long term. And I do feel like we are really qualified just because of all that we've been through, all that we've seen separately in our lives, um, and then all that we've done and been through together. So let's get into it. We'll have a little itsy bitsy break and then we'll pop right back in with the questions from all of you. Hey y'all, this podcast is brought to you by Factor Meals. I have three children under the age of three. My life is fast paced and I need healthy meals that are easy and just readily accessible. So I love that I have Factor Meals in my fridge. I can pull them out and they help me stay eating healthy. It's so good, especially for this busy mom life that I'm living. Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every day easy. Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat in two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie, and more. I've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash holdmycrown50 and use code holdmycrown50 to get 50% off. That's holdmycrown50 at factormeals.com slash holdmycrown50 to get 50% off. (laughs) 
Welcome back from the break. We are in the questions. The questions that all of you submitted on my Instagram back in January. So I'm excited to answer these and to hear your opinion as well, because Daniel and I have done a lot of YouTube videos on dating and relationships, and there's times yeah. where we don't agree. <laughs> and true. I will give some advice that I feel very strongly about, right. and Daniel's like, uh, no, that's not healthy. But and then we realize I, I am right. right. <laughs> Incorrect. Okay. So uh, the first question, and if you're watching on YouTube and you see me look to the side, I have my notes over here. Um, you're let's not see. Off book. I'm not off book. I'm sorry. Wow. Okay. Um, how do you know you are healthy enough to be dating? That's a great question. That is a great question. Yeah. Who would like to take it? I can start. I mean, I, like we kind of already mentioned, I did a lot of work to be mentally, mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually ready to be dating. I think one thing that's really important is loving yourself fully. So if you think about it as like a cup, your cup is 100% full, if I'm speaking to the ladies, with out a man or anybody else in your life. You don't need a man to make your cup full. He can just add a little extra sprinkle, a little whipped cream on top. Like we don't know. Oh, is that inappropriate? Hey. <laughs> hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear. Tell you a little something that you'd like to hear. Oh, gosh. You guys, I'm new we, to the we, podcasting <laughs> world. Forgive me. Uh, Forgive me. I didn't mean that. Okay. No. Stop. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh -huh. No whipped cream. Just oh, makes yes. the cup overflow. Okay, now everything is oh, good. Sound. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I need another analogy. <laughs> no, we're, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Okay. Valentine's Day. A man Let's does not does not fill the cup. Okay. Your life is full. A man just adds a little like, oh, that's nice. Okay. <laughs> Daniel, do you want to answer? What was the question? <laughs> How do you know you're healthy enough to be dating? Uh, I think you started off on the right path, doing <laughs> doing the work, doing yes. the work individually. Mm -hmm. You know, and I listened to a podcast recently. It was like, let the past be in the past. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We all bring uh, baggage into our relationships, mm -hmm. so try to bring as little amount of baggage as you can. Mm. So let go of your bitterness and resentment from other relationships. Mm -hmm. Let go of uh, your self-pity or um, your own guilt and shame. Mm. Let those things go. Forgive those that may have hurt you because when you bring in resentment and bitterness and self-loathing and all those types of things, that's only going to hurt your next relationship. Mm -hmm. So do the work. To let those things go and you can be healthier going into the future. I agree. I feel like I could talk about this all day long. It also just... whipped cream and uh, make sure your cup is overflowing <laughs> with lots of good things. I um, feel like we could talk about this all day long because I want to just like keep going down the rabbit trail of yes, do the work, but then also be rabbit aware hole. of the red flags. Rabbit hole. Trail. Bunny trail. Rabbit hole. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I, yeah, I could feel like we could just talk for days of like, be aware of red flags and don't settle for less. Like there's so much more, but maybe that will come up in the next questions. Truth, truth. Question number two. Numero dos. Dos. What are some healthy physical boundaries when dating? Go for it, homie. I know you have stories you want to tell. What are you talking about? <laughs> um... So we come from like a faith-based Christian background. So mm -hmm. it's like, as best you can, <laughs> don't be intimate before marriage. Why would he want to buy the cow when he can have the milk? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, yes. Set, set boundaries yeah. going into mm -hmm. a relationship. And then if someone is not respecting those boundaries. Oh, look at you. He's such a good advice giver. <laughs> I'm just like doing all the weird anecdotes. And <laughs> then you know that that's a red flag. Absolutely. If you have and boundaries that he's pushing those against things it. Mm -mm. Of, you know, well, if you love me. So have boundaries and uh, make sure that other person respects those boundaries. To kiss on the first date or not to kiss on the first date? What do you think for all the people out there? You know, if you're feeling a spark, I can't say no. I can't say no. Did we kiss on the first date? 
you wanted to. <laughs> but I said, respect my boundaries. <laughs> okay. I have a no kissing on the first date rule. Uh, that's not true. Um, we did not. We, we did, did not. not. But you sure <laughs> did get very nice and cozy <laughs> while watching Game of Thrones. And then I left your house. I sure did snuggle and sit next to you. Yes, you did. And then I was like, bye. And I left. I wasn't like trying to stay. With glitter all over my bed. Okay. That's not now. Moving on. All right, how, oh, this one breaks my heart, but I feel like so many people ask this question. It was asked in a few different ways, um, but this one was just asked just this exact way, how to overcome dating hopelessness. Mm. Hmm. I know, it's so sad. Um, I was definitely in that season. I was like, "Mm -mm, there ain't no men out there. They all suck, and... I'm never going to find anybody. And I just feel like I have to be okay with being alone forever. Literally had those thoughts. I was trying to figure out how to be okay with being alone forever. Um, And what got you through that? The self-work I was doing. I was Mm -hmm. reading a lot of great books. Um, Why Men Love Bitches. Great book. And then there's like a Christian version of it. Um, Something about an irresistible woman. I have to look up the title. Why Men Love Female Dogs. Yes. Is that the Christian version? No. <laughs> it's like this, the secrets of an irresistible woman. That's it. And it's literally like the same premise, but it also like backs it up with scripture. Like why you need to be like a boss and, you know, not change your whole life for a man. I feel like that was one of my biggest takeaways. I, th- I know I'm getting away from the question, but like if a guy's like, hey, do you want to hang out tonight? You're like, uh, no. Like that's, he shouldn't be asking for last minute hangs anyway. So it'd be like, I actually have time on Thursday afternoon. Let me know if you if you can make that work. Like you're not changing your whole world for a man to accommodate him. And also men, I'm sure have like a desire to like pursue. So if you're just like, sure, free, I'm whenever, I'm free whenever. Like you don't want to be that girl. You want mm-hmm. to just continue your normal life. If you normally do yoga and you're not free, then you're not free. Don't say, oh, I'll cancel my yoga class so we can hang out. No, you want to stay true to who you are. And I feel like that's more like enticing to a man when you are exactly who you, who you were meant to be. You're confident in that. And you're not trying to change who you are for that person. Um, that's not answering the question at all, but got off on a, <laughs> a little bunny trail, not a bunny hole. A bunny trail. It's a rabbit hole. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, baby, how, what, if you were speaking to like, a young woman in her 20s. It was like, how do you overcome dating hopelessness? What would you say? Um, first, you can't just sit in hopelessness. Mm. You have to find your hope again. Mm. So you got to be able to put yourself back out there. This is so good. I feel like every time you talk, it's going to be like, amen, mm-hmm, preach. <laughs> like, that's how I feel every time you start talking. Okay, keep going. <laughs> um, you know, you got to get yourself back out there. Mm-hmm. But again, you need to do the self-work. Mm-hmm. Uh so it's that fine line of running your own race, knowing your intention, knowing your goals, knowing what your passions are, and then usually you're going to come across someone who's mm-hmm. on that same path, mm-hmm. um, but also being open to it mm-hmm. and putting yourself out there and being available mm-hmm. for when that may happen yeah. or will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. What of it? Mm-hmm. How did you know Daniel was the one? What are the what are the signs for like confirmation of that? So Daniel's very confident. He's like, duh, of course I was the one from the beginning. <laughs> As he sits back and like, yep, mm-hmm, no. So because I come from the like family like origin story that I do, I was scared and nervous. Like I knew exactly what I was looking for. Let's start there. You say smitten and excited no. is that what, oh. uh, of course I was but yes. when it comes to thinking like can I marry this person it was something that was scary for me because of so many divorces yes, and separations yes. in my family Jokes aside. Um, one thing that can really help is even before you start dating having a list of what you look for in a man um, or vice versa, if you're a man, what you're looking for in the woman that you're dating. Um, I think it really helps to be really clear on that and very specific. I had a really long list and it was 
every little detail. I wanted someone that was the life of a party and had a great outgoing personality, but also loved sitting on the couch and like snuggling and having quiet time in, not someone that always wanted to be out or always wanted to be in. Like I was so specific about every little detail. I wanted someone that loved God. I wanted someone that would say, I love you all the time because I really didn't grow up hearing that very often. So I was very, very, very specific, even specific on the physical stuff. So write your list, give it to the universe, pray about it. That's what I did. I was like, I'm writing this list and I'm giving it to God and he knows what I need. Um, But I was very specific. And I think having that is the first step in identifying like, how do you know this person is the one? And They don't have to be everything on the list, but you also need to have your non-negotiables. So it's like, hey, they're hitting almost all these points. I can let that one go. It's not that big of a deal, but my non-negotiables are X, Y, and Z, and I'm not going to continue dating this person or even consider marrying them unless they've hit my non-negotiables that I Mm -hmm. will not budge on. So I think that's a starting point. And then it's also a choice, and I think that's something that is like, okay, I'm choosing this person. They've hit the majority of what is on my list and I'm going to choose every single day to love them and to step forward together. One final note that I'll say, especially for women is, is the person that you're dating someone that you want to be the father of your future children? Because you can choose who you marry, but they don't get to choose who is their father. So is he someone that children deserve to grow up with as their father. And that's really important if you plan to have kids. Yeah. Their thoughts. Oh, killed that. Thanks, boo. That so good. Thank you. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Um. Okay. And just so you guys know, for all of these questions, I kind of started with dating and then into ones that kind of hit a little bit more of the engagement stage. And then we did actually get a lot of marriage questions, but I kind of condensed them because they almost all hit the same like three points. So I just kind of condensed all of them. Let's see. Next question. Okay. This is one we can have a little bit more fun with and then we'll get into like the engaged engagement ones, which are more kind of nitty gritty. Next question is how did you guys meet? Who made the first move? Daniel go. <laughs> and I think we shared a little bit of this on the get to the, our first episode. Right. So you can just give some really quick bullet points for people that haven't listened to the first episode and then we can move on. All right. We met very briefly at our friend's engagement party, but she doesn't remember meeting me. It was in a group situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then three months later, I was serving at our church at a Good Friday service, and she walked in, and I remembered her from that engagement party. And uh, I said, hey, Nia Sanchez, right? <laughs> And like, how is this stranger know my first and last name? I wasn't no stranger. We have met. <laughs> anyway, uh, so she said, yeah. And I said, oh, we met briefly at Chris and Kristen's, and we connected there after the service. You came and found me, mm-hmm. and uh, there was a book club happening at the time, um, small groups type thing. And I said, hey, are you guys uh, doing a book club or anything like that? She was with her friend. And she said, yeah. And I said, is it co-ed? <laughs> and she said, yeah, the more the merrier. <laughs> so at first, the more the merrier, I was like, okay, is she just saying, you know. When I was anybody... trying to be nice. Like, sure, come to my book club. Like, right, whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was already involved in a book club. That night, I called and canceled <laughs> that book club because I said, I'm going to this new book club with this That's gorgeous That's 20 minutes woman. away instead of the one down the street. Um, and then I hit her up a couple of days later, I mm-hmm. think, on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I didn't have your digits. Mm-hmm. And uh, took you out on a date. And we went to, are we going to get into all this? No, just the bullet points. You made the first move by asking about book club. Yes. And then you took it farther than that by asking me out on a date. Correct. And I don't think you said, do you want to hang? Because I was very like in this season where I was like, if a man asked me if I want to hang out, the answer is no. Like I'm not making friends with guys just to hang out. Like you want to date me or you don't? No, I said I I would love to take you out and get to know you better. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So then it was between LACMA or Runyon. And of course, Daniel chose Runyon so he could take his shirt off on our first date. First of all, <laughs> first of all, if you know Runyon Canyon in the summer, it's 100 degrees. It was March. Ain't nobody wearing their shirt. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's the question that I feel like really 
really ties into engagement season. It could be talked about before engagement for sure. But before you get married, you want to discuss all the hard stuff, the kind of things that maybe you weren't, aren't talking about in the beginning of dating. So this next question is how to address financial stuff like budgeting, re- financial responsibilities, debts, roles, who's paying for what, that kind of thing. I'm going to let you take this one because you handle all of our finances right now, but that wasn't always the case. We obviously had separate finances when we started dating. Things were kind of, we had that discussion when we were engaged before we got married. We were doing things really together. I'm answering the question. We were doing things really together in the beginning of our marriage. And I would say ever since we had kids, it's just, you've just taken over. And I'm like, cool, you take Mm -hmm. care of it. Well, no. So you have to have those tough questions. Mm -hmm. And we are... (laughs) You have to have those tough questions. <laughs> and we are very big advocates on premarital counseling. Uh, no, seriously, on getting a third party, someone that is professional in this area, because you are going to really deep go down a rabbit hole, <laughs> uh, do a deep dive into some of these questions that you don't like to ask or talk about. or They can be embarrassing or, you know, um, scary. Uh, but better to have these conversations before you get married mm-hmm. than after. Yeah. Um, that's also why a lot of marriages end in divorce because of finances. Literally the number of, one reason that, yeah, right? Is financial is, is, pressure. Is, I know it's one of the top. Yeah. Um, but hash these things out way before. Um, times have changed. Things are different. Like I grew up, my dad took out the trash and uh fix things around the house and my mom did the dishes and did the laundry. Nan doesn't like to do the dishes <laughs> and the laundry all the time. I put the laundry she in is the wash very into and the dryer. I just don't like folding it sits there or put, for putting it away. A couple of weeks. That could be a button. <laughs> Again, know your roles in marriage. Go over those things. And talk about finances. Mm-hmm. Talk about how you're gonna handle those finances. Um one thing that was amazing that I never asked you to do, but you said I wanted to come in to the marriage debt free. You mm-hmm. had some credit card debt, and you were like, mm-hmm. "I really want to um, hunker down and and be able to try to pay these off before mm-hmm. before we get married." Um, so, doing that, and then while you're married, we haven't done this as m- much as of late. Only since as having we used kids, to. life is crazy with children. Lord but have before mercy. having kids, we would have almost a. We would have at least like Almost a quarterly a financial quarterly, meeting. It was monthly, yeah, it was budge, monthly a budget point. meeting, um, talking about our finances. Also, a big thing is writing down your goals together mm-hmm. um, and uh, and putting in a plan of how to achieve those. Right. And just to like put a little button on it, if anybody is interested, the way that we went into handling our finances going into marriage is obviously we had our separate accounts before we got married. We opened up a joint savings account to start like a emergency fund, like right when we got married. And then we still had our separate bank accounts and we kind of decided we want to be able to live off of one income. And Daniel's was obvious, not obviously, but Daniel's is a larger income because he's working in the entertainment industry. So we lived off of his income and then my income was more for like fun things. We would use it for little trips or splurges if we wanted to like buy something extra. So we were able to know that like if one of our incomes for some reason had stopped, then we would still be fine because we had extra. And then now we, I mean, we'll have to get into all of it, but we have an S corp because for us that's better financially. And all of our paychecks go into one account and then we... So we still have our own separate bank account, so then we can pull money into our own separate bank account. The big thing, too, I think, to take away that we've always um, stayed true to is we don't make any big purchases without mm-hmm. a conversation with right. each other. Right. And that sometimes happens. Of, But I make lots of little purchases. Exactly. <laughs> and we've had to have conversations about that. Amazon adds up real quick, you guys. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, so that's key. Communication is key when when doing that. Okay, this is kind of back into dating a little bit, and then a little it's just a little bit of every area of relationships. How do you how important is it to feel a spark? Um, something that I heard before we started dating that was important to me was I heard that there was like some studies that had shown that the 
quote unquote, like in love feeling the butterflies, all of that typically doesn't last past two years. So I had told Daniel very early on, I was like, we ain't getting married before two years because I want to know that I am still like able to like choose love with you past that initial like butterfly feeling. Um, we got engaged at a year and a half. We got married mm-hmm. at two and a half years. So you just lined it right up just a little past two no, years. No, that was all you, girl. <laughs> I was pushing back a little bit because you were ready to do everything way earlier. But because of my background, oh, I had that stuff. fear mm-hmm. of like, but like, what if it's not real? Because I just have all these butterflies and I'm obsessed and have this in love feelings. So I wanted to wait a little bit longer. Um, but I feel like in long-term relationships, you go up and down with the spark, but it's also Mm -hmm. a choice to create the spark. It's not always going to be how it feels at the beginning of a relationship because your love matures, but it becomes like stronger and deeper and higher quality, but then you have to choose to create that spark. How do you create the spark, my love? Well, the question is, do you feel like you need a spark to go into a relationship? How important is it to feel a spark? Correct. Oh, like in the beginning? Exactly. Yeah, you better have a spark. You better be obsessed. Careful, that word can go be... In a good way. In a a healthy way. Not in a stalker creeper way. In a like... (laughs) You better be obsessed. (laughs) Like get the basement ready to just... (laughs) What? I don't even know what's happening right now. Uh, You said in a stalker way. Um... (laughs) You're re- 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 rewind. Uh, so yes, there needs to be a spark. I've had conversations with guys that are like, she's, you know, I've been in the relationship for like six months and, and, you know, she's just amazing and da, 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 da. But you know, I'm just, I'm not like really that attracted to her. And it's like, Mm-mm. bro, Mm-mm. be gone. Get out now. Be gone. Mm-hmm. You got to have that type of initial spark that, yes. you know, attractiveness. It doesn't. It, doesn't have to be. No, it does have to be attractive physically. Yes. yes I have yes, three points yes. that I heard in middle school. I was trying from to. Pastor Sabo. And I will never forget because it was like it applied for the rest of my life when dating. And I heard this at like 13 years old. He said that you have to be attracted to somebody spiritually, mentally, and physically. You can't be like, oh my gosh, I love their brain and I love their heart. But like, mm, they're not that cute. But like, but I should be with them because they're like great per- people. Yeah. No, if this is something that's going to work out long term, you want to look at your partner and be physically attracted yeah. to them. Yeah. And it can't be like, oh my gosh, he's so hot and he's so smart. But like, we don't really connect on a spiritual level, whatever that is for you. Maybe you're a Buddhist or you're whatever. Like, you need to be connected to someone in those three areas. And that's really important to be attracted to yes. them. And you can't leave one out. It's important to have all three. I agree. A hundred percent. Boom. And also I think women struggle with that. If they had like, you know, they keep going for the attractive guy and they keep getting burned mm-hmm. or you whatever. And they're mm-hmm. like, well, I'm going to give that up because I'm going to date, you know, someone that's not so much. And, but that would be more like stable and I don't have to worry mm-hmm. about so many things. Mm-hmm. Don't settle. Yeah. But don't have your, don't have <laughs> No, shoot. <laughs> you should have you, too high. You should have high yes. standards, absolutely. Yes. And I think the don't settle is like no, you're non-negotiables. You know, there, that's it. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> we started strong. <laughs> okay. A mm. lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of the questions about dating and like keeping the flame alive. I saw that more than once. That actual like wording, um, keeping the spark alive. Like, how do you? be in a long-term relationship and still keep it interesting and still date. I had questions that were like, what's the question? How do you have, I'm trying to condense a few, like how do you have creative date nights? So just talk about where our ideal place would be with dating. Cause I don't think we're where we want to be, but when we're at our best, when it comes to dating and marriage. Three kids under two, right? Well, not uh, two and under three kids, two and under dad brain. See what I'm saying? I haven't slept in two months. No, we don't sleep. You guys, it's really bad. It's bad. I don't even know half the stuff I said. Don't hold me to any of it, please. <laughs> okay. Who Wh- are you? When, when we are at our best when it comes to dating. Oh, that was... Get, I remember break those it down. times. They weren't that long those ago. Were good times. <laughs> when we were at our best. When, when What would our best look like when it comes to dating and like having children and being busy and all of that? I mean, I feel like I've already talked about this, but this is another like big nugget is uh is 
Know your love languages. Mm. Know Preach. your significant others and your own love languages. Mm-hmm. It's a book by Gary Chapman, and you can take the test. And there's five love languages. Should I quiz you on them? Sure. Go. Physical touch, words of affirmation, gifts, quality time, acts of service. Boom. Boom. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what are my top two? Physical touch. It's really hard when you're a postpartum mom, but, you know, we're working on what it. What do you mean? You know. <laughs> you just look so sad right now. <laughs> I am a little. I, it's you know, you know what I mean. Just bring back out the whipped cream and all the <laughs> gravy, baby. <laughs> okay, and um, words of affirmation are your top two. Yes. Now mine have changed, and we haven't talked what? about this. <laughs> so, do you know? Guess what mine are now? Uh, quality time. Yes. Get, they're not gifts anymore. No. What? No, it used to be gifts. Wow. This is kind of, this is big. This is huge. This is huge. We haven't talked about this. Quality time uh-huh. and, let me think, uh, words of affirmation? No. Nope. No, I was never going to say that. Um, acts of service. Yeah. Boom. Daniel makes me eggs in the morning. I do. He brings the babies to me when I'm nursing them. Yes. I that know. is something we talked about recently. Yeah. We were having a little... A little season. A little bumpy patch. And mm-hmm. we said, what is something that I can do differently mm-hmm. to help you feel heard or help you feel Better loved? in our relationship. Right. Yeah. And you said, be more joyful when helping with the kids stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I think I want to actually clarify because when we had this sit down talk, I think maybe it came out wrong. I was trying to say when I ask you to do kids stuff because you are joyful all the time with our children. And I think maybe yes. you were like, hold on, but I am. I'm always joyful with our kids. Like, and you are. Mm-hmm. It was more of when I ask, when mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, can you change that diaper? Can you do lunch? Can you do this? Can you do that? It's like, I think when it comes from me, it's kind of like, uh huh, sometimes in the past. Mm-hmm. But with that request, you're more like, okay, sure. And you're like more joyful in it. That's what I need. I don't want to eye roll right. or a harumph. I need like, absolutely, I got you. We're a team. Let's do this. Boom. Okay. That was not the question. Date night. Okay. Um, but, a, but know each other's love languages. We're doing therapy right now. Because that's big. That's big. Because yeah. if you don't, and if you if you know yours, mm-hmm. if like mine are words of affirmation and physical touch, and my your initial thought is to think, well, that's what theirs is. Mm-hmm. Because that's how I receive love. Mm-hmm. That's how I'm going to give it to them. Mm-hmm. But you're not doing anything. Right. For, for they them. don't feel that love. Exactly. Their love language. Right. Obviously, we all feel love in all of those areas, but when you take the test, there is, you know, top two right. um, that you should focus and concentrate on. Yes. Just wanted to get that out there. So prioritize date nights. <laughs> um, what we were doing when it was just Asher was we were having a babysitter come almost every week, once a week. Thursday nights was our date night, mm-hmm. and we definitely need to get back to that. I have I give our, ourselves grace because I know the first six months and even the first year is really hard with a newborn. So it was like <laughs> we just need to survive the first six months yes. of having twins and three under two. And I do feel like a little bit more fresh this year and like we can refocus on date night. So yeah, just really make it may, like schedule it. I think if you schedule it and not like, oh, we'll get to it when we get to it, schedule it and then be creative. Don't go to the same restaurant every single time. Maybe go bowling, maybe do a movie night. Maybe it doesn't, you don't even have to spend money. You can go for a walk in a park and like have something that you're talking about. Parallel walks, quote unquote, parallel mm-hmm. walks is something we learned from our therapist really early mm-hmm. on is when you're walking side by side and not necessarily like staring at each other's face, it actually creates room to open up and share even more. Yeah. You don't feel so vulnerable when you're staring someone in the eye, you're side by side and you're walking. And so it's more fun to like, and you feel more open to share stories and memories and experiences. So even a walk in a beautiful park, or if you live near the beach, the beach or a trail, things like that, change it up and plan it. And even if it's every single Thursday, we're going on a date, do it, you know? Um, all right. There's more questions. We can do more. Did relationship. you say you would go bowling with me? Absolutely. <laughs> I can bowl. <laughs> 
Why is this so funny? I don't Without understand. the bumpers? Wow. <laughs> wow. Have we? Uh, yes, we have. Yes. But I can count on one hand. Mostly when we're in Michigan and there's nothing else to do. You never come in Michigan. That's like guys night. I hate that it's guys night because it's all. Okay, we need to wrap this up. But in Michigan, often it's like, oh, guys night and girls night. And the girls like sit at the house and like hang out and the guys do activities. And I feel like the girls are always excluded from the activities like bowling or whatever. And I want to be included. But it's like bro time. Well, someone's got to stay home and watch the kids, okay? <laughs> I'm just Help! Like, <laughs> 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 uh, I could like move it on. Punch you and cry because I'm emotional and sleep deprived, but we're just going <laughs> to keep moving. Mike, how could you ever say something like that? All right. I kind of. Just kidding. I just want to share. Okay. We're going to take a little break. We're going to come back, share one little short Thank story. God. One little short story, and then we're going to wrap it up. Love you guys. See you after the break. Welcome back from the break, you guys. I have Welcome back. One short story from our first date that ties all the way into like year six and kind of shows why we were meant to be together. Okay. Wow. Wow. It's like a big string that like tied through so many points of our relationship. And I'm going to try to make it quick, but make sure you get all the points. So we meet at Daniel's place to drive together to Runyon Canyon and we get in the car after the whole sparkle on the bed sheet situation. Um, glitter. Glitter. So after that, we get in the car. We're driving to Runyon Canyon. And we're at a red light. And Daniel starts freaking out that something's in his eye. And he looks over at me. And there is this giant wing across, like, the width of his eye. We actually have a picture of it. It's, yeah. like, taking up a massive it's a wing from a bug the whole wing is like across his whole eye oh yeah and it's like burning and he's like looks like he's crying and he's like pull <laughs> over so that we could get this wing out of his eyes like a whole thing and we were joking we're like oh my gosh it's like a baby pterodactyl flew in your eye like where did the word pterodactyl come from yeah. i don't know but that's the word that's that how came big the wing our, yeah it was like a baby pterodactyl wing like broke off in his eye and so ever since then we would just like joke about about like baby pterodactyl like it was just like a thing like the word pterodactyl was like a part of the beginning of our relationship <laughs> you your face <laughs> you. inside jokes guys we're not gonna fill you in on everything okay um but daniel would, <laughs> yeah he would make sounds like that <laughs> like a baby pterodactyl i don't know or you would i don't know where you'd be like rah <laughs> Continue. Anywho, we just pterodactyl was like a thing, okay? <laughs> Throughout our relationship. It's a weird word. I don't know. It was a thing in our relationship. And then cut to six years later, we just like always use the word pterodactyl for, I don't know, for random reasons. Like, anywho, cut to, I have to have eye surgery. I know you're like, where is this story going? I have to have eye surgery. I have sun damage in my eye and it's like really bad. It's like making the white of my eyes almost starts like yellow and there's like damaged tissue it's like raised tissue and it yeah, hurts like bubbly yeah it's like almost like bubbling eye tissue and it's <laughs> eye tissue that's totally the word mm -hmm. um and it's really painful and i have to go in for surgery and what they have to do is they have to like stick a needle in your eye to like numb the whole area they have to cut the bad tissue out take tissue from the part of your eye that has never seen the sun and like glue it on so i have this like massive surgery that i have to do and as we're doing like the post-op so i have the surgery everything's fine I'm doing the post-op and what was the name of pterygium pterygium so the name of the issue is like pterygium you have a pterygium on your eye and the doctor tells me and he's like yeah a pterygium that's like latin for baby pterodactyl <laughs> He said, it's like a baby pterodactyl wing is in your eye. That's a Latin pterygium is ter baby pterodactyl wing. That's the medical term. The medical term. For what she had. Is baby pterodactyl wing. 
by staring at the sun so much. I never stared at the sun. (laughs) Without wearing sunglasses. So we're meant to be together because on our first date, Daniel had a baby pterodactyl wing in his eye. And then I had to have baby pterodactyl (laughs) wing surgery on my eye six years later. That's a good story. It's meant to be. That's where we're going to end the episode, guys. Wow. All right. (laughs) Leave us some reviews. Tell us you love us. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, follow, share this episode or any of our episodes with someone that you love. We love you guys. And we'll see you next week on the Hold My Crown podcast. Later. Yay, networks.